Hi, everybody, and welcome back to an all-new episode of the Grand Valley State Sports Report right here on WGBU. I'm your host, Steve Lloyd-Jones, and here's what's coming up for you tonight. GVSU football hires Scott Wooster as the eighth coach in program history. GVSU men's basketball grabs two wins on the road in the UP, while the women split the week across the bridge. Our feature this week highlights the GVSU track and field indoor team and some student athletes that are hitting their marks early in the season. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. Grand Valley State Director of Athletics Kerry Becker announced at a team function Saturday night that Scott Wooster will be the eighth head football coach in program history. In the end, it came down to you. It came down to what was most important to you and what has been built here. And that was not lost on me. So while this was supposed to be an update, I'm going to announce and tell you that your new head football coach is Scott Wooster. this for me how badly I wanted to be your leader how humbled and honored that I am to get to lead this group of men okay I'm gonna do here's what I got for you and here's what our staff has for you this is what we're going to do we're gonna grow and build you into the best version of yourself all of my time energy, everything I got is going to grow and build you into the best version of yourself. To grow and build Grand Valley State football into the best version of itself. Hey, ooh, one day. Booster most recently concluded his third year as the offensive line tight ends coach and run game coordinator for the Lakers. Booster mentored an offensive line in 2022 that tallied five all GLIAC honorees, including three first team performers. Booster is the eighth head coach in Grand Valley State football history and the fourth consecutive head coach to be hired within the then current staff. TVSU men's basketball continued its winning ways with a sweep of the UP teams over the weekend. Grand Valley down Northern Michigan and Michigan Tech, and head coach Cornell Mann is here to tell us more about those wins. Coach, welcome. Welcome to the uh, show here down here and to, uh, to talk about it. And eight of ten in the win column for you lately. You guys are really getting it done. No doubt. Thanks for having me here. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Uh, eight out of ten is a, a credit to our guys and, and uh, the energy, effort, and focus that they have um, at this time of the season, which is uh, the perfect time to, to collect everything in terms of a team. We're doing a great job. They're doing a great job in terms of just playing together. Well, you get, uh, as we say, two wins here, never easy to do. And you had to start at Northern Michigan. I mean, they're a pretty good bunch up there, about 90 points a game. You and I talking off air uh, at their place. Mm -hmm. But you go up and win 82-77, and you're able to get this done. Uh, Daniel Keeley late with a key basket, and then you get a stop. Well, our, 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 our number one thing was to, one, take care of the ball, which we did a great job of. And... Uh, two to uh, out rebound them, which again we did a great job of. Um, we did not. Uh, we definitely didn't tell them that it was uh, uh, that those guys were scoring 90 plus points a game at home. Um, right now, our guys are are pretty focused on who we are, and and we'll do our best to keep it that way and not let any out, outside influences uh, uh, influence us. And and so right now, I think mentally we are as strong as we can be as a, as a unit. 
Well, as you were touching on uh, some of those categories, at numbers to them, you out-rebound them 36-27, including 11 offensive boards. You get seven steals in this game. It's a lot of activity. Three guys in double figures here. And uh, it would be a really good weekend for UP native uh, Mar Marius uh, Grizoulis as he was able to get uh, the double-double in this game, 14 points, 11 boards. So, again, great effort. Because going to the UP, you kind of got to bring your own energy, don't you? I mean, oh, it's, yeah. it's a long trip. Not yeah. many people there to root you on. Uh, but you guys were, boy, you're all over the place. Well, again, our guys playing better as a unit. And you can tell because even during the game, as I coach the game, I can hear the bench a lot more. Yeah. I can hear guys on the floor, which we are supposed to hear them. But hearing the bench and the excitement from the bench um, is, is what really uh, propels us and propels me to know that we're moving in the right direction. That's right. Well, you get it done with that long road trip there at Northern, the first of the two games. Now you have kind of, I guess it's almost like a double challenge. You're going to Tech after an off day on the Friday. Mm -hmm. Tech is not having a great year. So you kind of got it. You have to go to their place, as we say, bring that energy. And a team that maybe is a challenge to get up for, in a sense, unlike Northern, because they're not playing as well. But it's such a tough place to play. Well, it is. It's a tough place to play. The situation would have it be even tougher. Um, uh, you know, it, you. If you saw, we did not start uh, Harris, um, and we, we changed a, a couple of uh, rotations um, because guys are, are still working to become the unit that, that we can become. Um, and, you know, Harris is really playing well right now. Um, Mar has played his, his tail off. He's, he's playing at a high level. Uh, our bench is, is, is coming in a game and focused. So right now, everything is, everything is trending up. Everything is trending up, and as long as we, the two categories, again, taking care of the ball, because, because most of the time we lose, uh, we lose the glass, and we lose, uh, or the team, the, the uh, opposition is scoring in, in, uh, uh, off our turnovers. Mm -hmm. um, and that in itself will, will, and that's why, no disrespect to any team, but that's why I feel like we beat ourselves a lot of times, is mm -hmm. because we turn it over and or we don't control a glass, and that's on us. Well, you guys, again, great job on the boards, almost doubling Michigan Tech, 39 to 20. Some of these key uh, team stats now. In the paint, you outscore them 48 to 6. Whopping number there. Second chance points off those offensive boards by 10 in that category. Bench points by 11. But touch on a couple of key things here in this game. You had a really important run about 13-0, I believe it was, early part of the second half. That was a big surge. And then you made adjustments at halftime in their three-point shooting. They had come out, hit, I believe it was seven in the first half, mm -hmm. and you really limit that. So talk about that, maybe at half, what you guys focused on, and then that second half where you really executed. Well, a couple things. So the first thing was we, we played our normal unit. So Britt, played, uh, Britt Harris played to start, and then our rotation was normal. So that helped. Um, the other thing is, I think uh, at, at halftime we talked about, I mean, those guys were shooting, they were 7 for 14 from 3. And so uh, what we did was just reiterate it, the fact that you, you don't have any help on a shot. So you have to be there when a guy catches the ball and shut down the shot. Now, once you shut down the shot, now we can team defend him or whomever would have the ball. Mm. And so we did a great job of running guys off the three-point line and, and forcing them to take threes because that's what they do. So they're going to take them, but force them to take guarded check threes. And, uh, and then obviously we re rebounded the ball, didn't give them second opportunities at the rim. And so I think, I think at halftime those were the two things that uh, would, would be an adjustment um, to, to propel us on a 13-0 run early. Yeah, 74-61, Grand Valley beats Michigan Tech there on the road. Again, Marius Grizzula, 17 points, almost got another double-double. Mm -hmm. He had nine boards. Daniel Keeley, 12 points. Preview for us this coming week, because now you're back at home. Mm -hmm. It's Purdue Northwest. They're over 500 mm -hmm. uh, coming in. And Parkside, I mean, they're way over 500. They're 13-6, and 6-3 six, six mm -hmm. in the conference. So you're back home, but two pretty tough teams coming in. Well, yeah, and, and, uh, and, and both of those games were really good. Um, I, I didn't think we played great at Parkside. Uh, it was the first game back after, um, uh, after the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I, I just didn't think we understood who we had to be 
again uh, mm -hmm. because we were playing a, a good brand of ball before the holiday and then we lost that game and so it, it, it turned us up a little bit um, in terms of who we supposed to be every time we take the floor. Um, and so this, this week, uh, again, it'll, it'll be on us, but we have to defend at a high level. Um, in the first game against Purdue Northwest, uh, both teams are quality teams. Purdue Northwest is a hard balling team. Uh, we just balled a little harder on their home floor. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, Austin James, who had a career high um, and got a lot done, 19 points in 21 minutes. He can really score the ball if he played defense better, harder. He'll, he'll have an opportunity to do those type of things again. Um, and so we have to protect home. Our issue with being home, in my opinion, is us. And the fact that we, our players, have their friends, families, and sometimes um, when you're not locked all the way in, then all of a sudden you're playing for the crowd or playing for those reasons instead of playing for uh, the reasons that we're supposed to be playing as a unit. And so I think our guys are maturing to that point where they can handle that. So looking forward to this week and looking forward to the maturation process of our squad. Well, 11 and 8 now overall, 5 and 4 in the conference. You're over 500 there in conference play. 8 of 10 in the win column for the Lakers. Yeah, dealing with those distractions. Always fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, Cornell, great to have you here. Thank you. Thank and you. And a great job. We'll be right back as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues here in WGVU. On this week's episode, join Laker Athletics' Melina Talentino in a deep dive of everything GVSU with the Laker Lowdown. Stay up to date on the most recent stories from special events to player profiles to facilities. Every other Monday, a two-minute video will be posted to both GVSU Lakers' Twitter and Instagram. This week, Melina sits down with fifth-year women's basketball guard Emily Spitzley after making history for Grand Valley Athletics earlier this month. Welcome to the Laker Lowdown, where we take a deep dive into everything Grand Valley Athletics. I'm your host, Melina Talentino. What better way to start the new year than by making history? Earlier this month, women's basketball fifth-year guard Emily Spitzley became the 27th Laker in program history to reach the 1,000-point mark in her career. Not only this, but in the same game, she reached a career high of 31 points. These accomplishments landed her the title of GLIAC Player of the Week for the third time while in her career at Grand Valley. You can find her dominating on the court as well as in the classroom. And this past week, I got to catch up with Emily to see just how she does it. So in grad school, it's like, right now it's less class going and it's more just like studying, reading, homework, that kind of stuff. So I've learned that you have to use your time really wisely. So I you know now we have like a super long bus ride this week and I'm planning on doing like one of my projects on the bus and then in the hotel on Friday. So just being able to capitalize on the time that you do have available is important. I think that's something that's hard at first as a freshman, but as you are here longer and longer, it gets easier. Uh, my freshman self was a completely different person than I am now. Uh, if I could tell her anything, I would probably just say stick with it. It gets so much better. I know coach always says stay the course. And I think that the way I went about my five years as an example of that, I, I would say I exceeded my expectations for myself. I, I didn't know coming here, like what my career would look like. And I just kind of keep my head above water at first. And so to be where I am now, it, it is special to think back on and just see how much I've changed as a person and a player. So I can thank so many people for that. Just my coaches for sticking with me and then my teammates for having my back. So it's been a really special ride. Be sure to keep an eye out for more episodes of the Laker Lowdown coming your way soon. Until then, I'm Melina Talentino, Anchor Up. The Laker women's basketball team headed north for visits to Northern Michigan and Michigan Tech last week. Head coach Mike Williams joins me now to break down the results of those games for us. Coach, welcome, and boy, great trip. You don't get both, but you nearly did. 
Yeah, you know, you, you kind of going into it, you, you're kind of looking, okay, can we get a split up there? Can we get a split? Because they're both really good teams. You know, Tech is uh, obviously in first place in the conference, and Northern sitting at three losses, I think sitting in third or fourth place. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what you want to do. And then you, you get in the games, you beat Northern Northern, and you're, you're kind of riding high a little bit, and you prepare for Tech on Friday and get a chance to play Tech, and then you drop a really close game, then you're kind of – you kind of you banging your fist, thinking, "Man, we could have got two. But mm. I, I think at the end of the day, to go up there and get a split, you know, it, it's not that we're happy with it, but I think, you know, it, it worked out kind of probably the way it should have. Well, Grand Valley wins in the game against Northern Michigan, 45-38, the final there. A couple of things to kind of point to team-wise. Bench points, big advantage for Grand Valley, 24-2 to two in that category. And points in the paint, you basically double them in that uh, paint and often northern's got a lot of size so nice work in there thought we did a good job uh you know penetrating getting downhill you know we got some we got some baskets down there thought we threw it on the block a little bit riley bisball um you know scored she'd been she'd been a little more efficient down there than she had been we ran some you know coach phil put in some high some high low action uh, we dumped on the block that way and post up our guards a little bit um, and got some baskets, but again, it wasn't many, as you saw, because the, the score wasn't yeah. high, but, but we did win that category. And, and I think, too, like you said, Northern, they like to do the same thing. They like to post up their post players, Rude and Jendi and, uh, and Kuhn, some of their guards, and I thought our players did a great job taking that away from them, and that was probably uh, more impressive uh, with, that, with that aspect. Out rebounding them by 10, 42, 32, including uh, 13 offensive boards. And Mikey get 12 steals, so really active defensively. The scoring was spread around like you guys typically do. Eli Drosti leads you with 10, but wow, active in there. On the boards, tip ball, steals. I kind of like that. You know, again, I did. I thought we played with a lot of energy. I thought we really did. Um, and it's a, it's a different place to play. You play yeah. that very, a couple of our alums were texting me, you know, good old NMU <laughs> Grand Valley game up at Northern. And it's just, you know, and one of them did say this, you know, Karen Hink had te texted me and says, I don't know, I think it's that place they play. I don't like playing there, that big open ice arena. Mm -hmm. And uh, ironically, they're going to play in the, uh, the volleyball arena next year. And so maybe that will change it. But yeah, it was. It was an old game with a lot of, you know, I thought Northern played really hard. I thought we played hard um, and uh, we were able to, you know, to sustain it and, and come out with a, with, a, with a W. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes you hear teams talk about the depth perception with the bunch of space behind the baskets like that. Well, you get it done. Again, the win over Northern. So on to Tech, which is another hour and a half to two hours, by the way. You got to go up into the Keweenaw Peninsula. They get you 57-56 here, Mike, at the buzzer. You were saying you're this close to getting both games. They're very difficult to beat at home, uh, one of the best teams in the conference. But you nearly did it. A couple of things didn't go your way late. You know, we, we, um, we, had, a, we had two stretches where, you know, we, and again, you, as a coach, you always look back and what did I do not to prepare them. And you always, you, you got to understand that you're, you're running the show and, you know, we've been having some issues coming out of that. Uh, you know, we, had, we played great in the first half. I thought we defended. You know, I, I thought we, we made them earn their shots. You know, we, we didn't give them the, arc, the free arc shots. I thought we kept penetration. We did a great job on that block, not letting them score down there. And we came down and got good, good things offensively. We hit shots. I thought we got to the rim. Um, we didn't turn the ball over. And then we come out of that third quarter, and it hasn't been an issue with us. We've been actually coming out, and we just had a flat stretch. We just, hmm. and they want a 9-0, 10-0 run to tie it up. And then again, then I give our kids credit. We battle back it up by 10 again, and you know, Tech's good. They're they're, they're a solid team. Uh, we're a solid team. And then I thought down the stretch we had some. You know, I look back, and man, you know, we had some defensive breakdowns and, and things that, you know, as a coach, I didn't I didn't do a good job getting them ready for those uh, yeah. those situations. We got to do a better job when we play them next time. And then again, I thought, you know, we ran some good stuff. Uh, Emily had a nice take and got fouled, uh, hit a free throw. Uh, Coach Phil ran a nice little backdoor play in Nicole Kameen. They kind of tackled her out of bounds and, you know, she, she hit a free throw and, uh, you know, and then, and then down the stretch, they, they, hit, they hit a tough shot. Yeah, they did. Again, you had uh, great team stats in here, too, talking about uh, turnovers, only nine in this game, and you get nine steals. So that's always good when you have that total like that. Uh, they did get you on the boards a bit. But, again, you guys made uh, 
twice as many free throws as they shot, which that's always a key stat too. So you're right there. Uh, they edge you though, 57-56. So for Grand Valley, just the second loss, 17-2 <clears throat> and two overall, 8-1 and one now in conference play. And you're going to come back home, Purdue Northwest, on Thursday, uh, not having the kind of season they would like right now, but then Parkside on Saturday, Mike, 12 and 7, 7 and 2 overall, or 7 and 2 in the conference. You know, if you look at Purdue Northwest scores, and they lost in overtime to Parkside uh, on Saturday, they have, their scores are close. I mean, you look at 7, overtime, 3, overtime, 5, 7, you know, had Northern, had Tech down there. Uh, and so, they are, they're a very, they're the best, I'm not sure what their record is, I think they got one win in the conference, they're the best one and eight team in our conference by far. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be a game. They, they, we were down their place, I thought we did a great job getting stops down the stretch to, to pull one out down there. And um, yeah, and, and then you, like you, you talk about Parkside, we came back to pull one out in overtime at their place. Mm -hmm. um, they're playing really good. I don't know if they, they've got one or two losses in our conference. And uh, they can really score. Last year's player of the year, Alyssa Nelson, and um, you know, might be this year again. Who knows? Playing really good basketball. But uh, it, again, I, I think our conference this year, like I said, we don't have any, you know, separators, any any teams that are, you know, in that top five in the country. But we got a lot of really good teams, and. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always going to be a battle on yeah. home, at home, or on the road. That's right. So after the long trip, again, two games at home, Thursday night and uh, Saturday afternoon. Mike, thank you. Great job, and uh, keep it going. All right, Steve. Thank you. you bet. We'll be right back as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues here in WGVU. TVSU track and field is looking strong as the indoor season continues to progress towards the postseason. We'll highlight the throwers and jumpers that are getting it done so far this year. Tom Cleary has the story for us. With less than two months until this year's indoor track and field national meet, there's plenty of talent on the track for Jerry Baltus with scoring potential in Virginia Beach. But if the Lakers contend for national crowns in March, it might well be due to their strength in field events. Senior Judith Esamaya is back in action after winning the weight throw at Nationals last year and leads a strong crew on the women's side, which includes outdoor specialist Emma Richards, an All-American in discus in 2022, who hopes for improvement indoors in the shot put this year. Currently, I'm out on the list. I had a pretty rough first meet, but that was kind of drive for me going into the break time and over our finals week to really get those technical cues and really work hard on that. So I am ready to get that mark this next meet. Well, right now, especially since I already have the mark I need, we're kind of switching to getting stronger again in the weight room. So that usually impacts the, the length, like the distance of throwing a little bit there. So I'm more focusing on hitting really good positions right now while still trying to increase my strength. Miles Kerner was fifth in the shot put last year in Kansas, scoring big in the men's national indoor win. The Lakers have lost last year's 200-meter champion Brandon Miller, who's transferred to Division I Kentucky, but could replace or even surpass his point total in the high jump, with Jonathan Rankins James, who was fourth last year behind teammate Eli Kosiba, the runner-up at Nationals and the top jumper right now in Division II gets to the point where you got to realize every meet's not going to be your best meet. At that point, you just, try to, you just try to build off those things. It's a long season. One jump doesn't define how you're going to do the rest of the season. So on those bad meets, you try to build off those. But obviously, you want to PR every meet. That's the goal. That's what we're training for. I'm feeling really good, really excellent about it. Uh, Coach Steve, he knows what he's doing. He's pushing us, taking care of us. And like, you gotta take care of your body on and off the track. You gotta make sure you're eating well, sleeping right, because that's the most important. And while Kusiba and Rankins James might be the most likely on the men's side to reach the top step of the podium at the Nationals this year, the Lakers aren't without hopes on the track, where senior Tanner Chata returns after a third indoors in 22 in the 3,000 meters, and Claudia O'Malley, who was second there last season with a sub five minute mile finish. 
Sure, we got four or five individuals in that boat, you know, Eli, Miles Kerner, Judith, O'Malley, Graber, Tanner Chatta. So the great thing is that box is checked. Now we can focus on step two. While spring sports like baseball and softball have to go south to compete in the early months of every season, the Kelly Family Sports Center allows Baltus' squad to work at home indoors during the toughest weather months, where they'll be every weekend until the GLIAC Championships in Saginaw in February. And while the pitchers who work outside on the diamonds will be closely monitored until the warm weather arrives, the big arms on the track and field squads are cutting loose with all they've got right now. For the Grand Valley State Sports Report, I'm Tom Cleary. Well, that's all the time that we have this week here in the Grand Valley State Sports Report. GVSU men's and women's basketball will return home for a series of games this week in Allendale. On Thursday, the Lakers will take on Purdue Northwest in the GVSU Fieldhouse Arena. Tip-off for the women is scheduled for 6 p.m., followed by the men at 8 p.m. Then they'll host Parkside on Saturday for Alumni Day. The women's game will start at 1 p.m., followed by the men at 3. GVSU Indoor Track and Field will host the Bill Klinger Classic on Friday and Saturday in the Kelly Family Sports Center. The meet is scheduled for 10 a.m. on Friday and 9 a.m. on Saturday. GVSU Swimming and Diving will host Wayne State on Saturday, January 28th. They'll take on the Warriors in the GVSU Pool at 1 p.m. For upcoming games as well as live broadcasts of every Laker athletic program, visit gvsulakers.com. For more of this show, head over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get our updated videos and highlights all year long. For the entire crew here at WGVU, I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Have a great week, Laker Nation, and as always, anchor up.